it's been a little while since I've done one of these, but um, as some of you know, I've been releasing music recently. A new single came out uh, about three weeks ago called Always Forever, and I thought it would be fun to show you how I made it, because this one was pretty fun to make. Some of you may know that I have a new EP coming out on June 11th called Far From Perfect. Um, this song is from that EP, and I can't wait for you to hear the whole project. A lot of the music is super introspective and vulnerable, so I'm a little bit nervous about it all, but um, I'm excited for it to be yours. So anyway, let's have a look at the production of Always Forever. I hope you like it. Um, so Always Forever is obviously quite a nice song. Um, it's a love song and one of the one of the nicest songs that I've, I've ever made. So I wanted the production to kind of match that feeling and really tell that story. So it is quite, quite simple and sweet. Just talking a little bit about like the writing process. I think there's multiple meanings in this song. And honestly, the, like, I said this when I was releasing this song that it kind of relates to a lot of you in a way. Um, it's a, it's kind of a thank you to, to all the people that listen to my music and all the people that are in my personal life who support me and um, it's just kind of a thank you to everyone who's uh, who's who's here. You know, it's uh, it's really special and I think that I would be making music whether people were listening or not. But the fact that people are listening and the fact that people do connect with my music makes a world of difference and, and does make it all really, really worth it. Anyway, that's that. So I think we might start off by looking at the guitar. Um, this was recorded at my friend Nick's house. I was uh, I was over there just catching up and jamming and um, we started playing these guitar chords and he recorded them in um, and they sound like this. Yeah, that just kind of loops throughout the whole thing. Pretty simple, nothing nothing crazy going on there. Another thing you might notice that was kind of weird in the song is uh, this high-pitched vocal that comes in right at the beginning. Um, and that's my voice just pitch shifted up an octave. Um, and that was something that I did a few times on the EP, which you'll hear. Uh, and I think it was just... It was just something that I started doing while I was writing. Just as something funny, to be honest. I didn't think much of it. I just, like, thought oh, I'll pitch this one up and see how it sounds. And I kind of left it in thinking, yeah, this sounds this sounds kind of interesting. In a weird way, it like makes it feel more um, sort of innocent and childlike, which I think really suits the song. All that I do, I do it for you, I swear. So that's got a plug-in called Little Alter Boy on it. Shout out to Sound Toys. Um, it's just pitched up an octave. If I turn that off... There's a heaven. I know you'll be there You can hear that it's just my normal voice underneath Always forever um, And then as we move into the chorus I brought in, of course, the my, my normal vocal um, with, the, with the high vocal on top And then some uh, backing vocals as well So that sounds like this All that I do I do it for you I swear and then once we get to the second chorus, I add in the harmony as well, which sounds like this. So yeah, nothing too crazy, not too many layers there, but just a lot of doubling. What else? Oh, the piano. Um, the piano was lots of fun. I, I have a piano in my home. It was my grandmother's uh, and it's a, it's a nice memory of her because I, I never actually met her. Um, she unfortunately passed before I was born. Um, but it's nice to have a piece of her in the, in the home and I love playing that piano and I recorded it a very little amount for my first EP. So for this EP, I, I wanted to make the effort to, to figure out how to actually record an acoustic piano and, and put some real piano in the songs because a lot of the time I was just using my keyboard and doing like a, a software piano. So this was one of the first songs that I, I recorded real piano for. I'll show you that on its own. It sounds like this. So that kind of runs throughout the, the whole song. I just thought it really lifted up the feeling of Always Forever in a really nice way. And then of course I got the bass and I just did my usual thing here which is layering a real electric bass with um, a more electronic bass. So the electric bass on its own sounds like this. And then with the sub bass underneath. And then this one. Oh, that's more of just a like distorted bass over the top. 
So that's that. Very simple. Um, nothing too crazy. And then the drums. This is where it gets a bit fun. Um, so while I was at Nick's house writing the idea for this, we, we only got the bare bones of the song done at his place. It was just the guitar and a little drum beat and a vocal sample, which I'll, I'll get to. But the drums that we put together were just a few little samples. So that's the beat. And I liked the way that felt, but I thought it needed a little bit something extra. I reached out to a friend of mine, Nate, uh, also known as Franco Reed, um, who, who did a little bit of co-writing on this EP. I wrote New York Falling Apart with him. And he's also a really, really talented drummer. And um, I asked him if he'd be keen to play some drums on the EP. So he played on this song and another one called Figure Me Out, which you'll hear when the EP comes out. So his drums on their own sound like this. So nice. And then um, with, with the uh, samples over the top, it sounds like this. So just really, really full and wide and amazing sounding. I was, I was so happy with how those drums turned out. The other layer that, that we'd started at Nick's place was this um, vocal sample. There was one layer that I did and one layer that Nick did. Nick's layer sounded like this. And we basically made that by singing into a sampler, just like, uh, and then this little guy, quick sampler, can basically take the recording and apply it to every note on a keyboard. So you can play it like an instrument. And it's just a really cool little, little thing. I think I had a go at doing another like sort of harmony to his one, which sounds like this. Yeah, it's just that part. So then together they sound really nice. Little, little weird thing in the background there. Um, but you can hear that throughout the song and it just adds a little something behind the guitar and piano to, to kind of carry the, the mix through. I'd almost finished the song and I realized that the final chorus just wasn't hitting hard enough. It needed to go to a place that just felt so so open and so nice. In the first version of the song, it, it was just very similar to the first chorus and I, I wanted to change it up a little bit. So I added this slide guitar in there. So that's pretty much it for Always Forever. There's not too much going on, but I think every layer plays a part and really adds something to the song. I hope you like the whole song. Um, you can, if you haven't heard it yet, you can listen to it. I'll put the link below. Uh, and of course, my new EP, Far From Perfect, is coming out on June 11th, and you can pre-save that below. Um, I've also got vinyls coming out, which is so wild. I'm very excited about that. Um, and it features my first EP, Melancholy, on side A, and then... Side B is the new EP, Far From Perfect. I'm so excited that there's a vinyl. Um, it's wild that that exists. And yeah, you can pre-order that now. And I think there's about a third of them already sold. So uh, that's crazy. Um, we're doing a very limited number. So if you'd like to get one, the link's below. Really appreciate all the support and thank you to everyone that's already already got one. It's gonna be so special to have have my music on a tangible format. But yeah, anyway, here's, uh, here's Always Forever. Oh,